How do you become a more interesting person? For years, I struggled with this. For years, I, especially when it came to girls, I always struggled with what to talk to them about. And not just girls, but just new people in general. Right? I, had a, I had a problem knowing what to talk about and having interesting conversations. And because of that, I just came across as a bit of a plain and boring person, not memorable in the slightest. Looking back at that time, I know why that is. Right? It wasn't the way I was speaking, it wasn't the way I conducted myself, it wasn't my body language. It was one very simple thing. Back then, when I look back at that time, my life wasn't too exciting. I always stayed within my comfort zone. I didn't challenge myself. I didn't put myself in situations of stress or anxiety or just overall difficult situations to grow as a person. I was always in that comfort zone. There was nothing out of the ordinary happening in my life. And therefore, crucially, I had no interesting stories to tell. Storytelling, mate, is one of, if not the most powerful tools to convey ideas, your personality across to other people. Storytelling is the most powerful way to engage not just one person, but a whole audience. The most successful and the best public speakers, the best leaders, they always tell stories. Because stories evoke emotion. Stories evoke emotion like nothing else can. And if you are able to evoke emotion from other people, they'll listen to you more. They'll respect you more. You'll become more valuable in their eyes. And back then, like I say, I, did, I didn't have any stories to tell. Because I lived in so deep in this comfort zone that there was no interesting stories for me to tell people. And that is the best way to become more interesting. Have stories to tell. And how do you do that? Well, you go out there and you live life, mate. You go out there into the real world and live life. You challenge yourself. You go through failure, you go through obstacles, you overcome those obstacles. You take yourself out of your comfort zone to grow more as a person. And off the back of that, you've got stories to tell about those experiences. I went to Scandinavia last week. If I just tell you, I went to Scandinavia last week. You know, you, you know I went to Scandinavia, but there's no, there's no, there's no, you know, emotion, you know, tied to that, is there? When I just say, oh yeah, I went to Scandinavia last week, you're just like, all right, cool. There's no story there. There's no emotion, like I say, to to spark a deeper feeling inside of you. So let me tell you a story. When I was in Oslo, for the first couple of days, I neglected sightseeing. Right? I'm not much of a sightseer, to be honest, or I haven't really been that up to now. But ha having you know, had, off the back of a successful day filming in Oslo, I felt that it was only right to at least do some sightseeing as well. After all, I wasn't there just to pick up girls. When I'm there, I may as well see the city for what it is as well, because it is a beautiful city, I must say. Fantastic place, Oslo, right? And I asked a few locals of like the best places to go, the most places that are worth seeing. And one, one of the places that was most recommended to me was the Statue Park. Now I'll put a photo, of, I'll put a few photos of the Statue Park here, but I went to the Statue Park and it was beautiful. I think maybe too many statues, like <laughs> there was like so many statues in this place, like all different types as well, like actually some of them quite weird, like there was a guy there that, um, or there was a statue of a guy that had like three babies clinging onto him, like of, of like three limbs. It's quite odd, right? I don't know why the statues are there, but it was quite an interesting sight, I must say. And after I 
saw those statues I decided to just like, walk around the park a bit because as I was walking around I saw that a lot of people were sunbathing now I love sunbathing right it's just I don't know I'm pretty weird like that I just love sunbathing right so after I'd seen the statues since I was already at the park I was like you know what I may as well spend like an hour or two just sunbathing here as well so I went down to an area where, the, where, the, where there was a lot of people and as I was approaching like the grassy area, I saw four girls playing this game. And this game intrigued me because I'd never seen such a game before. Each girl had two wooden sticks in her hand and on the ground they had cubes, right? It was like a little pitch, right? And they had, some, they had four, cube, four wooden blocks or cubes on this side and four wooden blocks on this side. There was two girls on this side, two girls on this side. And it looks like they were throwing the sticks and trying to hit the cubes. Like I say, this game intrigued me. I'd never seen such a game before. So I decided to ask them about it. I approached the girls and I asked them what this game was. And they explained to me that it's like this traditional Norwegian game or Scandinavian game called Cube. And it's super popular, especially in the summer. And long story short, they invited me to play. And for the next hour and a half, maybe no hour, hour and a half, I was playing this game of cube with these four Norwegian girls. Just because I value social interaction and socializing so much, I could have easily, like everyone else there, just gone and sat on the grass, just sunbathed, kept myself to myself, and after an hour, walked off. But because I value social interaction so much, and because I'm not afraid to put myself out of my comfort zone, and go approach new people and ask them what they're doing and find out more about the culture of the country that I'm in from the locals themselves, I had this really fun, like, and this game, like, on the surface, like when I first saw it, it looks pretty boring, I can't lie, but when I played it, I actually got, like, really got into the game. Like my, <laughs> my competitive site came out and it was actually really good fun. And I still got a tan because obviously the, the sun's still shining. I still got a tan, but I had such a much more fulfilling and fun experience doing so. Playing a fun game I've never played before with four local girls, learning more about the culture and learning about them as well. And after like the hour and a half, I decided to go because I wanted to um, go back because the, the park was on the other side of the city to where, where, my, where my hostel was. It was like 5 p.m. at this point, so I decided to go back. But it was like a really cool, wholesome experience of just, you know, it just shows you what can happen when you just approach some people and just be genuine, just be outgoing, be friendly. You can have really cool, spontaneous experiences. How did that compare to just saying, I went to Scandinavia? I'm guessing it was a much more interesting listen. I'm hoping there was some emotion that was provoked within you. Whether it's just excitement for me or even a sense of inspiration a sense of inspiration and hope that you can go out and have these fun and spontaneous experiences. Having heard my story, you can go out yourself and just interact with new people, learn more about them, learn more about their perspective on life, and just make your day so much more interesting. And make yourself more interesting, because like I say, if I didn't do that thing, I would not have a story to tell. But now say if I'm speaking to someone and they're either Norwegian or Scandinavian or they've been to that part of the world before, say like I'm approaching a girl or, or I'm speaking to a girl and she's either Scandinavian or she's been you know, in that part of the world before. I've now got this story and so many others that I can throw into that conversation. And instead of just asking a girl, oh, I've been there, I've been there as well, how did you find it? I've got 
so many of these personal, emotion-provoking stories that I can you know, throw into the conversation make the interaction more interesting and make myself more interesting. Because I've got stories to tell. I've lived through experiences. But the only way that you're going to be able to develop these stories, like have these stories to tell, is by going out there and experiencing the, the world, mate, experiencing life. And you can only experience life to the true extent if you push past your comfort barriers every day. If you take yourself out of your comfort zone. Because it's that experience of the journey of pushing yourself past the limits that makes the best stories, that make the most interesting stories, and that make you come across as interesting as possible.